Like I said, most of the settings are actually set up in the preference section of the settings. But nevertheless, let's go back and let's th go through all of the actual settings here. First one down the list is cache. So let's go into cache section and here you can actually enable or disable the content cache and system cache. And basically what this will do, it will actually speed up your website a bit as it will not need to make uh, frequent calls to the SQL database and the two options here which are enabled by the default are the database structure cache and the thumbnail cache so basically you can enable all of those two or you can disable them and you can see that I do not have any files I have zero files in my database structure but nevertheless as the site actually grows it will create some files which um, which are going to be displayed here okay and basically you have the option here to delete all cache or you can go and just delete the content system database structure thumbnails on the browser cache and you will select that and hit on the delete button all right going back to the settings we'll go to the emote icons and once again i have mentioned this before this is to do with the emotional icons and smileys and whatnot okay you might get some information like this system information that it's actually missing files for pack zero detected in the database which is actually good sorry zero deleted in the database which is good and you can just hit on this x here and that will get rid of that particular message okay the very first option here and the only option is whether or not to activate smileys okay you can Deselect it like that and just hit on the update and this will actually deactivate the smileys. In the installed pack tab you'll find all the default smileys. So we have quite a lot of them here. You can see that its status is active and you have the configure and generate XML file here options. And what we need to do is to in order to have any of this actually being used we need to go and configure them. So here we find the list of all of these icons once again and we'll find a field right next to it which is actually the emote code and so for ex example for the smile I have entered this which is actually a usual the usual two characters we use to display the smiles and every time the users actually type in this as it's actually written and typed in here the smiley png will be actually displayed instead of those two characters okay so it's quite straightforward and you have quite a lot of those and you can actually go about and change those the way you would like to be displayed and used on your web page so for example for the question mark instead of actually displaying a question mark we can use a short code so for example something like this and each and every time this is actually entered like this so bracket question mark bracket this particular png will be displayed so once you have set up all of those fields or the fields that you would like to use so for example you might not want to use the alien icon and therefore you can just leave it as as it is blank but the ones that you do want to use you can actually enter the code in those text boxes and once you've done with that just hit on save and that will save your changes all right let's go all the way up to the settings once more and go to the front page the front page will give you something that's called a rule so we have rule number one user class so this is actually the groups everyone home page and post login page and we have the two options here to delete and to actually edit it so basically what this is is you can create different pages to be shown to different groups of people and to do that we'll have to add a new rule in the add new rule we can have the page displayed as news welcome message or the custom URL and all the people selected in the class section which is this one here from the drop down menu will actually be affected by this so for example if I say I want all my guests to go to a certain URL I will type that URL here and just to make sure just to see how it's working what I'll do is I'm going to select the admin I'm going to say custom URL and because I do not have any pages on my web page that I have previously built I'm just going to type in the Google's URL here so HTTP and make sure you do use HTTP there it is Google 
and I'll go into the post login page and I'll enter the URL here as well. So for example, I can go HTTP yahoo.com. Okay. So what I've done is whenever a user group or a user from the group called admin comes and types in my URL, instead of being shown with my homepage, they'll be taken to this particular page. And once they've logged in, they, they'll be taken to this particular page. Once again, the Yahoo and Google URLs here are really not a good example, but because I do not have any pages that I have built on my web page on my website, I'm just going to use this and show you how it actually works. So I hit on the update. And in the meantime, I'll go and I'll open my page. And instead of actually showing my page, I'll be taken straight to Google. So basically it's redirecting me to Google. And of course, if I logged in, it will take me to yahoo.com. And once you have actually done that, you'll get this information here that this has been successfully done. Okay. To edit it, you will click on this big button and to the leader, you will click on the big red cross there. All right. I'll do that. I'll delete it. And that's actually how you can go about changing the pages that your user or visitors or whoever's coming to your web page is actually taken to. And going into the create, we'll actually just create a new rule, which we have seen how to do. Going down the list, we'll come to the languages. And basically here you will set up the languages of your website. The default site language is set to English. The admin area is actually set to default site language, which is English. So you can have those different. So for example, you have your website in English and maybe your admin people are from France and you will select French here. Okay. Multi-language database tables enable or disable load language files only for current languages, yes or no. E107 also gives you the option to use park subdomains. So basically, if you have your website in many different languages, and for example, let's say that your website is www.mysite.com. And if you have different languages, you can use something that's called a park domain. So for example, you can put fr from France, or you can put en for English, and then you can have your visitors, depending on their IP address, be directed to appropriate websites. So people from France would go to fr, fr my site, and people from England will be taken to www.enmysite.com. Okay, and that's actually stated here as well. The last option here is display only errors during verification, enable it or disable it. In the create section, you can actually go and create different languages and you would need to have some of the plugins installed in order to do that. So this is what the create section looks like at the moment. And the last option there is the language packs. And because we do not have any, any other languages installed, we cannot see them in this list. The option here will give you a checkbox whether or not you can check it and this is actually to do if you are E107 certified translator. If you want to find more information about that, you can visit this link here. Under settings, we'll go to meta tags and this is self-explanatory and it's quite easy. So this is for the CEO and more explanation about your website. So you have some descriptions, some keywords, copyright, the author, the additional meta tags and whether or not to use the news title in the and the summary as the meta description on your news pages. Under the meta tags, we'll find the preferences, which we have seen before. We'll skip that one and go to search. In the search configuration, first of all, you will, you will configure the searchable areas. So whether or not you would like your, for example, comments to be searchable and who can actually search that. So everyone, or you would just like members only to search the comments, the registered members. So who can actually go and search in the section called registered members. And of course, I would strongly suggest that if you come to this, you will actually get your members only to search for the members. Then you have the news pages and Google searchable comments, comment areas. So you have the news and you have something that's called like plugin download name. So by setting this, you would actually go and select the options available from the drop down list or for the actual four options here, you can click on edit and here you'll find a bit more information. So who can use this? Everyone just guessed number of the results shown per page, 
and the number of characters in the search result as well. Then you have the pre-title text, default, disable or alternative. Okay, so let's go back to the main page here and this is basically all you can do when it comes to the search, but you can go to the preferences now and here you'll find some more information on search page accessible to users in the group or in the class and you can say guest members and everything else like before. Highlight keywords on referred to page, enable or disable. So for example, if I type in basketball, it will actually show me a list of the results and every time the basketball appears in one of those results it will actually highlight it. Display relevance value, enable or disable, allow users to select searchable areas, enable or disable. So if I'm just searching for the actual comments, I do not want to go through all of the members and therefore I can just say okay, I'm looking for the comments made on 15th of May and it will actually show all the comments made on that day because I have actually selected the searchable area. Allow users to search more than one area at a time, yes or no. Searchable area selection method, drop down, checkbox or radius. So how, how you would like to select the areas in which the search is going to be performed. Restrict allow time between searches, five minutes is the maximum. Search source method, you have MySQL or PHP which is going to limit it. Okay, the last option here is only match whole words enable or disable. Okay, so this is to do with the actual search engine on your web page. Going down the settings list, we'll now come to the site links. And this is basically all of the links you currently have on your web page. Okay, there's quite, I do not have quite a lot of them and basically I can move those. Okay, and the options here is that you can change how they appear. So for example, home, I can change that and make news appear first and then home second and whatnot. I can delete the whole page and I can hit on this edit and will actually open a new page like so where I can actually enter some information and change a few things so I can first of all select an icon here I can change the link name I can change the template so where I want this to be a main page sidebar footer and I have another three alternatives here sub link off so basically we can see that in this particular case article 1 2 and 3 are under content and everything else is a link of its own but basically if I was um, I'm doing I'm actually working with the news here so I'll say that my news is going to appear under my home okay and basically who can see this everyone I can enter the description here the order and the actual uh, link open type open in the same window open a new window and open into different windows function which is the optional I can select one of these functions where I would like to be open, my web page to be open. And so if I hit on the update, I can see that my news now appears on the home. Okay, so this is how you would manage all the links. Then you can go and create and you'll be presented with exactly the same page as we have seen previously when we were doing with news. So you can set up all of that. In the options section, we have only two options, show description as screen tip and activate expanding sub menus. In the sub link generator, we have once again only two options, create sub links from and you can actually select new categories or the download categories and then you have the availability to create sub links under which link and you would actually go and select that particular link. Okay, so this is all to do with the actual site links and the last option there is the url configuration all right so you have different pages here and you can actually select whether you want the default you the default url or the friendly url there okay that's under the url profiles under the aliases you'll find information on the front page you'll find information on the system and the gallery and basically what this means is if you're using a different language rather than English you can actually enter that in here so for example in Chinese system may not be system but something else and you would enter that information here or for the gallery you would enter that information here as well let's go into the settings now and under settings the very first option is whether or not to remove file name from the URL associate root namespace you can select none or gallery 
redirect to system not found page so if a page has not if a page has not been found you will actually await system which will actually display a not found page and then you have something that's called automate sef using creation type and i would leave this as it is and i would not change redirects will go into that and there's the last option here and basically there's some redirects here for the rss and few other things as well okay and basically that wraps up everything all the available options under the settings menu here now i strongly suggest that you do go through all of this make sure you set up your preferences correctly make sure that you go and you actually set up your links correctly make sure that you have your language and your front page also which is very important set up correctly and after that you are actually ready to go and start building your home page and actually changing other options and preferences before you actually start building your web page but after the installation the very first step would actually be to go into the settings and change and adjust the preferences under the settings okay so that's it on the menu called settings in the main menu of e107